Jenkins was working on fixing a fight venue that had his champions, Mulligan, and put him up against a tired and rusty Smith. See, Smith had him fought since Pops had defeated him for the title. Mulligan had the WBO, World Boxing Organization title. The Villa had the WBF, World Boxing Federation title. And Pops held WBC, the top prestigious title, World Boxing Commission. Jenkins wanted that one and bad. Pops had two title shots in one year and just won one the year before. Now that's what you call ambition and dedication. Brody turns to Jenkins and says, Oh, boss, MGM called. They want 150000 for for that night and they want an extra 50000 for insurance on the parking area. Now don't shoot the messenger, man. Jenkins replies, What? Shit. Hell no. Tell them yes on the arena rental. And 20000 for the parking lot insurance. Now get the fuck out of here. I'm on the phone with my attorney. He then turns his attention to the telephone and says to his attorney, Look man, 13000 is good enough. I'm not dishing out no more money to that has-been. We make $7 million and he gets 13000 my champ gets one million and I get three. The rest of us are bills and of course you. So please, tell that slow son of a bitch that 13 is all I'm giving. Take it or leave it. He'll get a million when he's able to win, okay? Win, motherfucker. Something he's used to not doing. Now, goodbye. He then gets an announcement from his secretary via intercom she tells him that Lincoln Weber was there to see him he tells her to let him in now Bob Weber was the owner of an arena in Canada he stood at six feet chubby balding black and pepper hair no facial and he was trying to get in to the boxing scene he wanted to bring American boxing into Canada. And the only man who could do that, only because of the way he did business, was Jenkins. Jenkins greets the stocky man in his mid-40s and shakes his hand. He then said to him, sit down, sit down. Have a seat, man. How's it going out in Canada, my friend? Ha, 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 ha. Weber replied, Good, my friend. Good. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking to make things better. You know what I mean? Jenkins then offers him a drink, but Weber rejects it as he continues to say, Look, Mr. Jenkins, I want to bring boxing into Canada. We can make lots of money together. But my question is, how much? How much to bring this beautiful sport to the, my country? Jenkins then smiles and says, Well, let's see. We have a lot of people to talk to. A lot of them may not want this to happen. But more or less, money speaks to everybody. <laughs> And uh, I can tell you that we're looking at maybe 150 million. Jenkins just stood there looking straight into Weber's eyes. 
Whip is then responds. Is that all? Well then, my people will call your people. Very good. Jenkins then says, Uh, my people will call yours, Weber. I had to speak to several boxing commissions. Then there's approval, of course. Weber just smiled, shook his head, and left the office. Jenkins just smiled. New York, May 1976, fight week. And Delancey was looking at Pops doing his thing on the speed bag. He was also looking around the gym at the same time inspecting all the equipment. The old man was still making his way to the bodega. Pops was hitting that speed bag. Sound like a machine gun was going off at the gym. And I tell you, he was just ripping that bag. And he was waiting for the old man. Pops turned to the Lancey as he was hitting the speed bag and asked him, What's keeping the old man? The Lancey replies, He's on his way. He had to meet up with the owner of the garden, Madison Square Garden. The old man was paying for the arena and basically paying the bill. The old man kept Pops away from the politics, but always was honest and open with him. As the old man walks in and says, I was paying bills. I'm sorry I'm late. The camp just laughed as Pops met him at the speed bag. As Pops punched the bag in combinations, the old man screamed at him in order to give him an extra push. He said things like, hit this bag as if it tried to violate you, as if it tried to take everything from you. The old man gave Pops that extra push in order to keep him concentrated. And after that particular session, Pops had a visitor, and his name was Clever Anderson. He was 5'9", 190 pounds, and wore a white mink coat with a fur hat and a lot of gold around his neck and fingers. Yup, you guessed it. This motherfucker was a certified pimp. Remember that kid from back in the days, in Pops' days, when that kid stole money from the jaw and Pops had to knock him out. And that kid stood over and looked at Pops and said, You killed him, Kelvin. Yep, that same clever Anderson. Shit, he gave me game on women. But I'll get to that later. I called him clever because this man, a man I consider my uncle, actually got away with millions from under the mob's nose. I know this because my pops told me. He actually had his hoes distract him at a boss's house while he and other gifted brothers, let's just say, grabbed up the money and skipped town. To this day, they don't know who or what hit him. He's so smooth. He still shakes hands with the boss. Clever had pulled a lot of money too. This motherfucker had politicians as well as movie stars and law enforcement buying pussy. It all worked out for Clever, even to this day. And when he bet on Pops, 
he made money. He and Pops went way back. And I tell you, Pops noticed Clever and they embraced each other and smiled. Clever and Pops, they were busy. But when they met up, when they caught up, when they would see each other, it would be at least twice a year, once on Christmas and on the 4th of July. And he'd bring fireworks, lots of fucking fireworks. But when they seen each other, it was official. Anyway, clever tool pops. Hey, brother from another mother. What's up, champ? Long time to the fight. I mean, pops replied, two more weeks, man. What are you doing here, brother? It's me. Clever tells him, listen, I put a cool two million on you. I win, it's eight million. And you got two easy, brother. And slaps five. My pops handshakes. And then hugs him. The old man then yells out, He can't take that money, Clever. You know that. Clever turns to the old man and says with a smile, Hey, poppy, relax. Now, I know not to even come here and fuck up your boxing thing. But if I bet and he wins, what's wrong with that? It ain't drug money. The old man then says, how thoughtful and considerate. <laughs> Let me just make this clear, Clever. I like and respect you. What you do for a profession is your business. But it's illegal to bet on Kevin. Then he wins and he partakes of that. That's not legal to the boxing commissions. But if Kelvin bets on himself, well, that's a different story. Then smiles and hugs Clever and says, You piece of shit, how are you? Clever then says, I'm good, Poppy. I'm good. And look, look. He snaps his fingers as one of his workers hands it to the old man. Clever then says, here, Poppy, some old grapes. The old man holds up a bottle of wine and says, what the fuck? Oh, oh, shit, Clever. This is beautiful. 1880? Shit. <laughs> I was there, you know. <laughs> and they all laughed. Then the old man says, thank you, Clever. Thank you very much. Clever then says, listen, Calvin. This new chump. What's his name? Pop says. Davila. Then Clever continues. Yeah, that chump. Well, you do me a solid, brother. You knock him the fuck out. Out cold, you dig? Got the bookies talking shit. Doubting you. I had to control myself. Pops then says. You know, I got your back, brother. You just get my money ready. Talk to Stan. We'll talk details with you. Then Clever and Stan walk into the back office. The old man then says to Pops as he watches Clever and his brother walk towards the office. Kid, I tell you, you have crazy friends. Good people though, good people, but crazy. Pops just turns and says, I know, I know. Don't get involved. The old man then says, well, yeah, don't get involved in their lifestyle. Now, let's hit the mitts. <laughs>